The iMac has long since been a pretty easy suggestion for those looking at getting an all-in-one computer that is super low maintenance and a very good value for the dollar. Well, not that long ago, Apple totally revamped and re-released their entry-level iMac, fitting it with their new M1 processor, allowing for this to be a totally unique and impressive display of technology. So how is it holding up after one month of solid use? Let's find out. This is my wife, so I can't actually slam it because if I break it, I'm in really big trouble. And while we're finding out, I'd like to thank today's sponsor, Squarespace. What's up, everyone? I'm the Everyday Dad. And if I can figure it out, you can figure it out. There's so much stuff here that I got to maneuver around. I've got to be honest with you. The more time that goes past, the more impressed I am with this iMac. You might have noticed that the colors finally changed down here, and that's because I went up and I snuck my wife's iMac down here for this video. And the one that Apple let me borrow has already sent back. As this is a follow-up video, there shouldn't be too much surprising inside of here, as there really hasn't been any huge experience-breaking bugs or life-changing firmware updates since our last video. This is going to be a refinement of my original thoughts with some input from my wife as she's been using this every single day for both scheduling and running her professional job and going to virtual school for her master's. She is a very busy person. So let's start off with the things that I've, well, we've liked in the past month. The first thing that I've liked is just how comprehensive of a package this really is. You don't notice it until you're trying to kit out a family member with a functioning computer, but all of those accessories and all of those pieces really add up quick. Buying a decent keyboard can run a hundred to a couple of hundred bucks. Also, while 4K has become more and more accessible, it's still not cheap to find a high quality 4K panel. And though people are divided on it, finding a mouse that can work the same as a trackpad and mouse at the same time, I don't know that there actually are any that can do that besides the Apple Magic Mouse. What I'm trying to say is that assembling a computer, even a pre-made one, can be a huge pain in the butt from both a financial perspective and from a having to go out and get every single individual thing perspective. But here, not only is it super easy to put together, you can also buy this for less than the cost of some laptops. Like a full desktop rig costs about the same as a base model MacBook Pro. And I think that's really impressive. We did spec it out in the comparison video with the Mac Mini, but trying to go that route and adding everything together, it actually came out more expensive than just going with the iMac. Sure, there, there are absolutely use case scenarios for the Mac Mini. I personally use one because I love my ultra wide monitor. But if you aren't somebody that needs a screen the size of your wall, it's real hard to match the M1 iMac for value for dollar. The next positive is directly from my wife. She's really liked how well this computer works for her video conferencing. And this really, what this is, is it ties two things that we've talked about into one. First up, the cameras here on the front are probably the best camera that Apple's come up with yet. And the cool thing is, it's not only the camera, right? With the M1 MacBooks, Apple came out with a new ISP, or image signal processor. And what that does is it adds some algorithmic magic to the image coming off the camera to make it look even better. It's a little too, it's not giving me any space over here. When it came out on the MacBooks, it was cool, but it wasn't all that great because those still have 720p potato cameras on board. However, here on the iMac, you've actually got a very respectable 1080p camera combined with that ISP. And I think the image quality you get with the iMac imaging system is up there with some of the bigger and much more expensive setups. But we did say it was two parts, not just one. Image quality alone doesn't make a good conference setup. And the microphones built in here are next level good. I would absolutely go so far as to say these are class leading onboard microphones. Apple calls these studio microphones and it might be very easy to be skeptical of those claims, but however they've arrayed this on the computer, it sounds, it just sounds so much better than it has any right to. Not only do vocals sound very crisp and very clear, there is a very legitimate amount of background noise reduction that's happening too. I think that's impressive. I mean, we've all been running our meetings from home for a while now, and there is always some kind of background noise from pets, from neighbors mowing lawns, to all sorts of junk. It's just very nice to not need to worry about it as much. And you know, you won't irritate everyone the second you unmute. Though fam, please, if you're watching this and you're the mechanical keyboard person, and you know if you are the mechanical keyboard person, please just, I know everybody bought them. There must have been a run of mechanical keyboards over the past year. But please don't unmute while you're clicking and clacking. It drives all it drives all of us crazy. Something else that I've really liked is the display itself. Sure, I've seen a lot of people complain about the actual size. And we already said the reason that I don't personally use one of these is I need a gigantic ultra-wide monitor. Well, I guess need is a strong word. I prefer a gigantic size monitor. But don't let those complaints dissuade you if you don't specifically need a certain size of display because this actually feels 
way bigger than all of those complaints would make it seem. Again, going back to my wife's experience, she spent the last few years using a MacBook Pro as her main computer, and moving from that tiny screen to a almost double the size monitor, she's enjoyed it a lot. Not only does this new design language mean that you'll get a much bigger display than you might think originally, but this is also going to be very vibrant and very clear. It is a 4.5K retina panel. It's got the same color accuracy that you've come to expect from Apple. So I think if you were a YouTuber or some other kind of creative, this would be a fantastic choice if you don't always want to calibrate your monitor. But calibrating your monitor is good practice if you're going to be doing this on a more full-time basis. The next thing that I've liked is specifically a me like, but I think my wife also likes without really thinking about it, and that's the power. And I think that's an even better advancement because my wife doesn't think about it. The M1 processor is an eight core beast that is powerful, but it's also quick. And the genius of this, at least from a daily user and not somebody that needs all that ultimate cosmic power from like a thread ripper, is the way those four cores are broken down. Four are high powered and four are high efficiency. What that means is if you were doing something like opening programs or waking the computer up from a nap, it will instantly happen because it's got the efficiency cores waiting and ready to go. But when you need some more oomph and you are doing something like a big virtual meeting or rendering 4K video, it can tap into those power cores and give you power that rivals the big boys out there. No, it won't compete with the latest Ryzen processors for straight up monster multi-core performance. And it's also not gonna top Intel's latest offerings for single core performance. But I think I think it's got a real nice middle ground where it's competitive with both of those styles of chips but you get the efficiency and the small size that Apple Silicon is known for. Plus, if you are somebody that has a full Apple ecosystem, I like that with the M1 chips running on an ARM system, you can run most of your iPhone and iPad apps from this iMac. So if you don't want to have to move away from work between devices, this could be a really easy way to keep up with a mobile app you need for work without needing to stop working on your computer to use it. Like, you don't always have to pull out your phone, you've got it right here on the screen in front of you. And the last thing that I want to mention in the Continue to Light category is the Thunderbolt 3 ports on the back. This is another thing that my wife specifically pointed out to me. She likes that in moving from her MacBook to this iMac, all she had to do to fit into her existing computer setup was to use one plug. While her original MacBook was the 2015 model with an awful lot of I.O. and it's still Looking at that computer, it still makes me sad where we've come to in the future, and there will be more on this later. All we needed to do here was we just took a dongle, plugged it into the Thunderbolt port, and connected it to her second monitor and all of her other accessories, and she was good to go. That's what makes me like Thunderbolt so much, and why I consider it a negative when computers don't have it. And since we've been bringing a lot of Ryzen stuff in here, it's always going to be a handicap of Ryzen until their new series of chips and motherboards come out that have Thunderbolt capability. I'm really hoping that that's a true statement and not a rumor that I saw on the internet that I'm around. You can have all that functionality out of a single port, and there are so many dongles out there anymore, you don't even need to spend that much to basically hook up a whole computer ecosystem of stuff via a single Thunderbolt spot. Though, okay, let's move over to the things I don't like. This is a desktop computer, and I don't like that all we have is two Thunderbolt 3 and two USB-C. Another reason why I stick with my Mac Mini is while it might have two less USB-C style ports, it still has two USB-A, an HDMI, and an Ethernet built into it. And if you buy the lowest end base model of the M1 iMac, you will not get the Ethernet port that's built into the charging brick. So this is kind of lacking in I.O. And I understand that they are trying to go as small and thin as possible. I mean, heck, to even get the headphone jack, they had to put it on the side here because the computer is thinner than an actual 3.5 millimeter audio port. But people looking at IMAX are probably not going to have all of that current cutting edge Thunderbolt accessories and they are more likely to have things like HDMI cables or other accessories that they can easily pick up at a local Best Buy or Target or something like that. I feel like I say this in all of these videos, but I think I would have preferred this to be a few more millimeters thicker to have more ports added in the back here. And while my wife didn't specifically lay out that as a thing she didn't like, I know part of her hesitance to move away from her MacBook Pro was the lack of all of those ports that she needs for her other monitor and her work when she's out traveling. And something else that both of us haven't liked, and it's probably the thing that bothers me the most about the iMac, is just how top heavy this thing is. Yes, this is cutting edge, and it looks super sweet with how thin the stand is, and how suave and svelte 
the whole package is when put together. But the stand is just a teeny bit too small, or at least the way the computer is designed to sit on it, it's just, there's something wonky going on here. What I don't like is if you were trying to move the computer around in your desk, it is very, it just happened right there, it is very easy to tip it, and the way the mount and the computer are combined, when it tips, the mount swivels, like when it tips, the computer swivels, making it very easy to knock your whole computer over by barely moving it. What she doesn't like is when she bumps her desks or table, the computer wobbles a lot. And while she doesn't move it around as much as I probably would, these wobbles are exacerbated by the hinge and computer design, making it an actual nerve wracking experience sometimes. And you don't see it as much here because I edit it out here, but I have to edit out a lot because bumping your table is something that I do all of the time because I'm kind of a klutz. And I'm not calling my wife a klutz. This is just a me thing. Glares at camera. Doing that shouldn't make you scared that you're about to break your brand new computer because that's not the monitor that you might break. That's the whole kit and caboodle. But at the end of the day, so what, right? Look, I love the M1 iMac. All of those negatives are small things that you can easily work around. I mean, the more we use this here at the house, the more I like it. When this was announced, I figured we'd get one in here for making videos and kind of move on from it like we did with the last Intel iMac from last year. But this computer has its hooks in me because much like my Mac Mini, which the Mac Mini is probably my favorite computer ever made. This is such a crazy value for the power and the price that I find it hard to recommend or even have you look at anything else. After a month, would I still recommend this? Yes, absolutely, without any hesitation. I recommend this to anyone looking to buy a family computer or anyone looking to move over into getting their very first Mac. This thing takes all of the guesswork out of ownership and all you need to do is buy one thing. You go pick it up at the store or they deliver it to your house and it's in a box, has everything ready to go. You just plug it in and you are good to go. Thanks to today's sponsor, Squarespace, you can create your own very beautiful website. Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build a professional website online store or portfolio. It's so easy to claim a domain slash URL, create a custom site that matches your style and brings your ideas to life. Head on over to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, head on over to squarespace.com slash everyday dad to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. And thank you for watching.